So, Alan Schlemann wants to know if any religion is true, then fails to show that any religion is true, then kind of rambles at quote-unquote atheists, although we all know it's aimed at the religious, and makes a bunch of ridiculous claims. But hey, there's a reason it's stand against reason, right? I keep going back to the irrationality well at Stands Against Reason because it's the gift that keeps on giving. And this time, it's given us a load of religious nonsense ostensibly aimed at atheists, but we know from experience that's really not the case. So, is any religion true? Or is it all wishful thinking and ad hoc rationalization? You decide. What follows if you don't think that any religion is true? You have a better grip on reality? Because rational people should only believe things which can be demonstrated objectively and intellectually to be actually so. Just based off this first question, though, it seems to me that Alan here, and indeed a lot of apologists I've encountered, think that you have to pick a lie to believe because, well, everyone has to believe one of them, right? Well, the answer is simple. Nothing. Nothing follows if you don't think any religion is true. And you say that like it's a bad thing. Because unless a religion is actually true, unless it can be shown to be factually correct in some objectively verifiable way, then it's just a variety of lies sold to the gullible that no rational person should buy into. What exactly is wrong with that? It definitely doesn't follow that no religion is true. In fact, nothing follows from any thought or belief that you have. That is patently false. Your beliefs inform your actions. So if you believe bad ideas for ridiculous reasons, your actions can and almost certainly will be affected. That's why it's important to think about what ideas you allow into your head and the potential consequences of those ideas. But yeah, I know that requires work, so hey, just believe blindly, right? And that's because reality doesn't change to accommodate your thoughts or your beliefs. Exactly. Your religious faith doesn't accurately represent reality unless the things that you believe are actually true. And this is yet another of those points where the religious are so close to the truth if they just stop to recognize that they're on the wrong side of reality. But they won't. You can think whatever you want. It doesn't make it true. Like, um, the belief that there's a God. Just because you believe it doesn't make it true. So close, Alan. So close. Now, having put aside the question of what one merely thinks is true, the question that becomes important is this. What's the true state of affairs about reality and about religion? And that's really what we all ought to be concerned with. But we also know that you and your apologist ilk couldn't care less because you're only concerned with feeling good, not with being factually correct. I actually care if the things in my head accurately represent reality. You do not, because if you did, you, as I do, wouldn't believe anything that couldn't be independently and objectively shown to be factually correct in the world that we all share. But since you are religiously delusional, we know that's simply not the case for you. Is there any religion that's actually true and not just true according to one's own sort of personal beliefs? Good question. They all make unjustifiable and unsupported claims that cannot be shown to be correct. So, no. I'd say they are all factually and equally wrong, at least until they come up with good reasons to think that they are right. Now, you might be tempted to think, well, no religion is true, and that somehow would absolve you from committing to any particular worldview or having to defend any particular beliefs. I'm not saying they're all false by definition. I'm saying that in order to convince me that they were true, they would have to prove that they are with objectively demonstrable evidence. And that hasn't happened. That's why I reject them all, because they are unsupported. But here's the thing. 
Even if you don't think any religion is true, that doesn't mean that your view of reality necessarily makes sense. Sense to who? Because clearly it makes sense to me, just as yours makes sense to you. But this isn't about making sense on a personal subjective level. It's about making sense on an objective level. I'm concerned with what is actually true, not with what feels good to think is true. And that's what separates us. I care if I accept true things into my head, regardless of how that might make me feel. You do not. If you think no religion is true, then your most likely worldview is naturalism, which is the belief that nature is all there is. Naturalism isn't a worldview, and here's why. And this also goes for materialism, which gets thrown around a lot. See, the only thing we actually have any evidence for is nature. It's physical reality. It is objectively demonstrable and testable. We can make verifiable predictions about how nature works and how it operates. Therefore, because we care what is actually and demonstrably true, nature or naturalism or materialism is accepted as correct because it's the only thing we actually can show is real. It's not some ridiculous religious faith. It is following the evidence that we have to the conclusion that it leads to. In other words, you will think there's no God, there's no angels, there's no souls, there's no afterlife. And why would we believe any of that? Because there's no evidence that any of that is more than make-believe. And because it makes you feel really good to think that these things are real, you insist that your beliefs have to be valid, even though there's no good reason to think that they are. You are delusional, Alan, and you are doing your best to rationalize your delusions. But even this view doesn't get you out of the woods because that worldview entails three what I would call incredible assertions. It isn't a worldview, it's an assessment of objective reality. But sure, let's see your three laughable assertions. First, if you believe in naturalism, if you don't believe any religion is true, then this means that the universe came into existence by itself. No, it means that it came into existence, whatever that means, through purely naturalistic means. It means that the universe didn't need some magic man to poof it into reality. And this is where the evidence points. We may not understand all of the details yet, but absolutely nothing in reality suggests that any gods had anything to do with it, period. In other words, your view would say that all of space, time, and matter, all the billions of planets and stars have just popped into existence from nothing and by nothing. That would be your God, wouldn't it? We're not saying that nothing with nothing for nothing or anything of the sort. We're saying that we don't know and not knowing doesn't give you a license to just make some crazy nonsense up because it makes you feel good. Evidence, Alan. Figure it out! Now, you may not believe in religious claims, but you're going to have to consider whether there's, there's any evidence that such an incredible feat can actually occur. Well, clearly it did, because here we are talking about it. The question is, which side, assuming either side is correct, has the best explanation with the best evidence to back it up? And I'm sorry, but your side has nothing but empty claims. That isn't to say that the naturalistic explanation is automatically correct, but between the two sides presented here, it has the best support by far. Now here's the second thing that your view entails, if naturalism is your worldview. And that is, you would have to believe that you are just a physical object, yet you still have free will. And what's wrong with that? Because here's something that people like Alan don't like, again for emotional reasons. Free will, indeed all consciousness, is just a product of electrochemical reactions in the physical brain. You are nothing more than that. And I don't care how that makes you feel, that is what every shred of evidence we have shows. But this is what happens when your position is based on feelings, not facts. Now the reason that's an incredible claim is that According to naturalism, you are entirely made up of matter, and therefore you have no soul. There's no immaterial part of you that can be free from the forces of physics and chemistry. So what? Because that's what the evidence shows to be true. 
That's how rational people operate. We don't care how a proposition makes us feel. We care if it can be demonstrated to be so. So what the hell is your problem, Alan? And so being a physical object then means that your thoughts and your actions are determined and you have no free will. Says the guy who believes in an all-knowing, non-temporal, super-being who must, by definition, know everything that you will ever do in your life with perfect clarity and can never be wrong. There seems to be a problem with your cognitive function here, Alan. What's going on? But I suspect you probably believe that you do have free will. You probably think that you have freely reasoned and used logic to conclude that no religion is true. Yet another straw man. I haven't concluded that no religion is true. I have yet to be convinced through logic, reason, and evidence that any religion is true. Hence, I don't believe any of them. But that would be a contradiction. You can't have free will and free reasoning abilities that are not determined by physical laws and chemistry if you're just a physical object. Funny, I seem to be doing pretty well as a physical object. I mean, I'm able to think and reason well enough to point out all of the emotional stupidity that Alan here is spouting. And so finally, the third thing that your worldview entails is that morals are completely relative and therefore there is nothing that is ultimately wrong. Yep, nothing is ultimately objectively wrong. That doesn't mean that we as human beings in human societies can't make our own determinations what is going to be acceptable and what is going to be unacceptable within that particular society. And I know the religious hate this, but again, evidence. We go where the evidence leads, not where our emotions want them to lead. And the evidence simply does not match up with a divine lawgiver. If it did, we'd expect to see the same morals everywhere and throughout history which we simply do not see. The morals in the Middle East are different than the morals in Australia, which are different from the morals in Japan, which are different from the morals in South America, which are different from the morals in the United States. But rather than discard the claim because it doesn't match the evidence, the religious rationalize their way around the evidence so that they can maintain their obviously wrong and unsupported beliefs. There is something seriously wrong here. You can complain all you want that the madman that murdered your mother didn't do what you would have liked him to do. But you can't say that what he did was wrong, objectively wrong. No, but you can certainly say that it was societally wrong, and since we all live in society, and society punishes people for violating the rules, that murderer, even if they didn't do what I wanted them to do, will receive justice. And that justice is certainly a lot more rationally defensible than the idea that some magical man in the sky will get you, maybe, someday, after you've had an entire lifetime to rape, murder, and steal. This is just an appeal to fairness, which, as is no surprise, is a logical fallacy. As any careful thinking atheist would admit, if there is no God, then an ultimate standard of right and wrong is just an illusion. Yes, it is. So why do you believe in one? Because your desire for an ultimate standard of right and wrong doesn't mean that one actually exists. This is yet another appeal to emotion because the religious have nothing else. They're not happy with how the world works, so they pretend that something else has to be going on without doing any of the legwork to show that it actually is. So if you don't think any religion is true, keep in mind that it doesn't follow that your view is correct. But it does follow that your worldview still makes incredible assertions that require a lot of explaining. None of which is actually so, as I've already shown. And of course, Alan here hasn't shown that his or any other religion is actually so. He's just trying to tell atheists, or let's be honest, theists who want to look down on atheists, that what they're doing is wrong. Unfortunately for Alan, atheists by and large aren't doing anything wrong. They are being skeptics and evaluating claims on their own merit, not on how they make them feel. And theists hate that because theists are exactly the opposite. It's feels over reals, emotions over reality, ignorance for the sake of ignorance garbage. 
That's religion. And so long as that's religion, you're not going to get many rational atheist converts. In fact, people are flooding out of the churches because the drivel that's coming down from the pulpit cannot be rationally justified. It's emotional, self-serving gibberish aimed at people who aren't that smart and don't ask too many questions when it comes to their faith. But we have to ask questions. We have to care if claims are true. And it doesn't matter how we feel. It matters how critically and skeptically we are looking at these claims. And people like Alan here wouldn't know skepticism if it bit him. That's why religion and its adherents are just laughably absurd. It's why I keep picking these videos as examples to point out just how ridiculous it all is. And the stands against reasons and the Andy Bannisters of the world just keep making it because they never learn. And that, in and of itself, proves just how irrational they all are. But hey, what else is new?